fucking episode, are we? So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 208 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, Australia's most demonetized fucking podcast in the game. I'm making no money. I hate cash. If you hate cash, put your fucking hands up. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see green signs on my YouTube. I want to see that fucking yellow. Every time I open up YouTube, I want to see that piss yellow. That's how I know I'm doing a good job. Bro, fuck getting monetized. I got Manscaped. Manscaped.com, shave your nuts. What do I need YouTube ads for? I've got people with hairy balls. They will support me. I'm not starting this off with an ad. I'm saying, right, that this is now officially, I've been doing this podcast for over two months without a single missed episode and without a single monetized episode. Fuck money. I don't want money. YouTube sucks, bro. Do you know the last video that I put out on my main channel? Dude, it got marked as hate speech because I said cunt in it. This was manually marked as hate speech and the reason was manually written because I said cunt. It said uh, any words like cunt, the N word, and faggot, right? At least I, I assume it was the N-word because it was N, asterisk, asterisk, E-R. Now, as a white person, I don't know how to spell the N-word or say it, right? When I say the N-word, if you think anything other than the N-word, if you think of what the N-word stands for, you're a racist. I don't think that. So I don't actually know how to write the N-word because I've never spelled it. I would actually say I've never written that shit down. Definitely not on paper. I don't think there would ever be a single moment in my life where I've sat down with a pen and paper and written down the N-word or what the N-word stands for. I've definitely never written literally the N-word but I'm also 100% certain I've never written down what the N-word stands for. What I'm saying is, guys, apparently to YouTube, the word cunt is right up there with a word used to uh, literally dehumanize a group of humans and treat them like shit and enslave them and make that okay on our conscience. That's what YouTube believes cunt is up there with. All right? It literally says cunt N word or N asterisk asterisk ER, which I mean, that's not, I mean, I don't know how to spell it, but I think that that's not how you spell it. I mean, maybe they're talking about the country Niger. That fits the, that's like N asterisk asterisk ER. Maybe they hate the country Niger. Maybe now my whole channel's going to get suppressed, this podcast channel, because I've just said Niger, the country Niger. Apparently, if you say Niger, YouTube reckons that's a hateful slur right up there with cunt. Apparently, cunt is a hateful slur. Shut up, cunt. It's Australian. I use that shit multiple times a day. We're not even five minutes into this podcast. I've said cunt more than 10 times. Yellow it up, baby. I've given up. I don't want, I don't want to be monetized on this shit. I just want to do real fucking comedy, bro. I'm like, you know what? Fuck YouTube. Dude, anyway, what I was saying was I put out a video on my main channel. Uh, half a million subscribers, bro. I put out a video. I thought it was funny. I mean, it's not Lou Review. I understand that. It's not bi-monthly. But I was like, yeah, look, this will hit like 100,000. You know, that it'll go all right for me. Uh, bro, It got I, because I said cunt and it got manually lab labeled as me using a hateful slur up there with the term Niger. 14,000 views. Bro, YouTube sent me back to 2012. <laughs> Those are the views I was pulling in 2012, bro. They sent me straight back eight years into the fucking past. Bro, get back to the face beef days. Put it on the fucking hoodie. Cover your face. 2012 views. Dude. I got absolutely fucked up by the algorithm, man. It's scary. They're changing shit. I mean, on this podcast, I don't care because this, like, even if, you know, a monetized podcast, maybe it'll get 5,000 views. For me, that's like, 
I don't know, $20. So I don't care. It makes no difference to me. You know, if I make 20 bucks or if I make $3, I don't care. But on the main channel, you know, like uh, uh, fucking half a million views demonetized, that hurts. <laughs> fucking, that hurts me. So that sucks. Uh, so I don't know, man. It's just, it's making me miss stand up more and more because I can't, I don't have that like outlet where I can do my real fuck shit which was always the stage. Now I've got all these fuck thoughts in my head. Clearly they're all coming out on this podcast, right? I'm just stacking up those fucking yellows, bro. Wet ass pussy. Anyway, guys, uh, I've been, I've been having, it's week two of quarantine here in Melbourne. I, just today found out that the quarantine period was not over, right? Now, I knew the whole time that this quarantine period went for six weeks, right? I knew it went for six weeks, but for some reason, just today I felt like we were, like, almost done. I have completely lost track of time. I mean, you can you can tell that by last episode of the podcast, I didn't do miscellaneous bit at the end because I didn't know how long I'd been going for. I got to the end of the hour and I was like, oh, I guess it's time for the patreon podcast and i didn't get to do miscellaneous bit at the end i don't know what an hour is i don't know what a day is i don't know what a week is i've completely lost track of time we're two weeks into this thing i thought we were five weeks in i thought it was almost over we're not even we're a third of the way in bro we're not even halfway i'm going insane i go to the park every morning and feed ducks like i'm 90 years old i'm going insane i'm i've reached that point where i'm like you know what Maybe there are kids in the tunnels. But take it all back. I'm going to be one of those cunts. Guys, the government's trying to control us. What the government really wants is they want us to cover our faces so that they don't know who we are. The government that wants to control us, they don't want us to work to death. They want us to cripple the economy and make no money. The government that we all know and love absolutely hates not knowing who its citizens are and also they hate that they hate it when we make money and pay tax. That's what the government's real plan is, is to make us completely lose sight and jump off this capitalist uh, hamster wheel, go back into our homes, spend time with our families and be completely anonymous. That's what the government, that's what they want. Is it really? It's about control, bro. Okay, control us to do what? Stay home? Why? That's what I don't understand about these cunts that think this is what the government wants. Dude, if I'm all for conspiracy and the and the evil people wanting to control everyone's life, you know what you get? You get China working their citizens to fucking death and if you speak up about it, you disappear. That's the end game of the evil conspiracies that you believe. The end game isn't we all quit our our jobs, the economy collapses, we start wearing masks so the government doesn't know what our faces look like and facial recognition software doesn't work. That's not the plan. This, if you're an evil person who's part of the Illuminati, you're wearing fucking goat's heads and fucking Hillary Clinton, right? You're third in line on the train. You don't want this. You want us to work ourselves to death. Because right now we're just sitting at home making no money, wearing masks. This isn't what they want. They want China. Work to death anyway. What the fuck am I saying? I've lost the plot, guys. And I think it's pretty clear. Um, No, I I did want to say that uh, quarantine is like fucked. I I think you can tell it's completely fucked the workload and the uh, the role that Keelan and I were on. So we were working like in this studio that we that that I built um, uh, inside a garage and uh, uh, we had it all going. Bi-Monthly Bull was coming out and then quarantine just fucked us. Now Luke and Lewis takes Keelan an extra day, which takes one day away from me. So Keelan's only working two days with me, really. And then even then, he, his workflow's like slowed down and so is mine because I got to fucking film something, upload it, he's got to download it. And then we, and if there's issues, we got to fucking send files back and forth. So it's fucked the whole workflow. The podcast is the only thing that's going really well, like workflow-wise consistently. This has actually been good doing it from home. Uh, but it, it, everything else is fucked. So bi-monthly bull... 
Uh, I've just finished writing and I'm going to record, but it's Friday today. So if you're a patron supporter, you listen to it on Friday, I'll film it like today or tomorrow. Uh, Killer won't even be able to start editing it till fucking Tuesday. So I might have to like just postpone the filming of it or film it myself and then edit over the weekend. I don't know. I, I need to work it out. But what I'm saying is I'm, we're slowly getting back on track. The YouTube channel has bumped down from twice weekly to weekly. I don't think I can do twice a week uh, under these circumstances. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I think that I need to uh, focus on doing quality shit rather than trying to keep up to the standards that I had when, when you know, the team was fucking here every day. So uh, hopefully this quarantine shit after the six weeks will uh, ease up and make this shit a lot easier to do. But until then, that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Uh, and I hope you understand. But uh, I'm uh, uh, one thing I am committed to doing is this podcast. I'm fucking growing it. This is uh, something that I'm really enjoying. And the podcast actually is growing fucking heaps, which is awesome. So thank you so much to everyone who's like sharing the clips around, uh, coming back every episode. Each episode I've done for the past six has performed better than the previous one in the same amount of time. So that means that it's growing, growing, growing. Views are up. Uh, downloads are up on the audio platform. So thank you so much to everyone who's sharing this and enjoying it. I really do appreciate it. And, and uh, I notice. Uh, so that's really, really cool. And I, I talked to um, I talked to my podcast host. They host some of the most popular podcasts in the world, right? And I talked to them about downloads. I was like, are downloads suffering? Um, because I've noticed that like my podcasts up and this is when I talked to them. I was like, oh, I noticed that my podcast isn't really growing is that normal for everyone? Because obviously they host millions of different podcasts. And they said, look, if your podcast is not growing, you're doing incredibly well during the COVID thing. Because in Australia, they've noticed like uh, there's no spikes in traffic anymore because obviously no one's in traffic literally anymore. So no one's like traveling, listening to podcasts. They said all of the sport podcasts are fucked. They said uh, sport podcasts across the entire genre are down like 80 or 90% in their downloads because there is no sport to fucking talk about. Crazy. Um, but she said, look, if, you're, if your podcast is not losing downloads, you're doing incredibly well. And if you're growing, that's miraculous. And ladies and gentlemen, we've officially hit the fucking miraculous category. So thank you so much uh, to everyone who's been sharing the shit, following the Spearhead Sundays on Instagram. we got a guy, uh, Reese, who's killing it with all of the clips and all the memes and all that kind of shit. And um, I wanted to say also that we have uh, finally got the Spearhead Sundays YouTube clips channel rolling. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of this and the top comment as well to go and subscribe to that. If you uh, can't catch every episode or you want to just catch up on clips and shit, that's how I listen to most of my fucking podcasts. I feel like I listen to like 30 podcasts, but really I just consume podcast clips from 30 different shows all the time. So uh, I've started to do that as well. And uh, if you want to share a clip, that's the best way to get someone into the show is if you enjoy a moment, write Dude, turn that into a clip. We'll make it a clip. And then you fucking send that to a mate. If it makes them laugh, they'll check out the show. That's how we're going to grow this shit. That's how we're going to take over. And that's how we're going to build one of the biggest podcasts in this fucking country. That's my goal. That's what we're doing over quarantine. And that's enough from me. All right, guys. Um, I've been I've been having a weird week, dude. I've uh, I've been I've been feeling like a fucking lab rat you know with this quarantine shit it's like everything else is out of the way so i've got time to like catch up on on the shit that i've just been ignoring uh, my fucking physical health so look a lot of people uh have told me before and my girlfriend keeps telling me and a lot of you guys have also told me this sometimes after shows i'll get told this or sometimes i'll get a message hey man love your stuff but i thought you should know this I'm told this all the time a lot of people think that I have a syndrome called Marfan syndrome. Now, what that is, is often, right, here's the symptoms. Being incredibly tall, having very long fingers, right, being very slim, and having crowded teeth, which I do have. I got my, my front two teeth overlap, right? I got that. I got all them. I took all the, I took all the visual cues of Marfan syndrome, right? Now, what that is, is the research that I've done to it. If you have it, uh, your heart at any minute can just fucking explode. 
because it's not built properly, it doesn't work properly, and a lot of people just don't notice it, and then they just die, right? And then sometimes your eyes are fucked up, and then also sometimes you have real flexible joints, which I do not have. I am not flexible at all, right? At all. I sound like very fucking posh there. Oh, I'm not flexible at all. Can I have a cup of tea, my darling? Um, now, I, so I've been like, all right, I got fucking time. It's such a bitch to get tested with this stuff. So I ended up getting tested while I was also trying to fix my nose because I can't breathe out of it still. <sighs> That's me all day, every fucking day. Left nostril fucked, right one barely functioning. I feel like a car with two wheels and the rest is just going <clears throat> on the fucking concrete. Not good, okay? I keep almost dying in my sleep. Dude, my girlfriend showed me a recording of me trying to breathe while I was asleep. Dude, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I thought, uh, bro, what you guys, what you guys just witnessed was the fucking, you know, the scene from the matrix where they dodged the bullet, bro. I just fucking dodged the biggest bullet in my mind went, say this. And then my soul said, Nah, <laughs> my, my, my brain went saying this will be funny and my soul said, no, that's me, don't ever. So look, you can make your assumptions about what I said, but there will be no conf confirmation or denying of what I just thought and stop myself from saying. Dude, I just, I literally just went on a rant of like, man, I'm not going to censor myself, bro. Every now and then, <laughs> right? So... Um, what am I saying? Uh, yo, I'm getting tested for like everything. I'm trying to fix my fucking nose. I went and got a brain scan. Wait, with brain scans, when I got a CT scan, you go in, you put your head in the fucking tube and then the, the doctor goes, right. So we're going to scan you. Just before we do that though, I'm going to put on goggles and go behind in, in a bomb shelter. And then I'm like, wait, hang on. Why are you going in a bomb shelter if I'm getting scanned? Where is my protection? Why, how, if, if this is safe for me, why do you have to go into a fucking bomb shelter? I literally said, hang on, is this safe? And he goes, yeah, man, this is safe. Mind you, he said that over a fucking intercom. If you have to say, yeah, this is safe, through bulletproof glass over an intercom to a man in the danger zone, that's not very comforting at all. That's terrifying. I'm sitting here feeling like I'm like I'm about to get fucking nuked. I'm gonna get I'm gonna turn into the Hulk, get radioactive poisoning, turn green and smash the city. This cunt's sitting behind bulletproof glass talking to me with an intercom, trying to say, yeah, man, totally safe. Okay, if it's safe, why don't you come out here? And we'll do the scan together. Whoa, I don't want to do that. I'm going to stay behind my bomb-proof, bulletproof glass. I got to protect myself from what? Me? Am I dangerous? No. I don't see any wolves in the, in the room. This is a doctor's office. I don't see any fucking wolves. Is there a fire? Is this a gas chamber? I literally started thinking, is this a fucking gas chamber? Is this a scene from Schindler's List? Everything looks like it's in color. Is it about to change? What's happening? Why is this guy putting on goggles, sitting behind a fucking bulletproof glass, talking to me over an intercom, telling me it's safe? Doesn't look very safe to me. Then he fucking turns the scan on. I don't know if I was making this up in my own head. Bro, I felt that shit go through my brain. <laughs> I, I felt that shit in my teeth. That doesn't seem very safe. I don't know if that was a placebo, if that was me, my own brain making it up. But I swear to God, when he turned that fucking thing on, told me to close my eyes, I felt that shit in my teeth. I swear to God, it felt like he was cooking my brain. And then when I got home, I had a headache. Now, it's, it's entirely likely that I just created that in my own brain, freaking myself out. But also, how could that be true if he had to sit behind a fucking glass? What's, what is he getting, what's he scared of? He's obviously scared of something. Doesn't make any sense, man. I feel like 
I, I, and you know what the worst part is? I got the scan back. It was completely normal. Great. You know what I read? Completely normal. For now, three months later, I'm probably, I'm probably going to grow a fucking thumb out my forehead because of the fucking scan. Bulletproof glass talking to me over an intercom. Everything will be fine. Doesn't look like it from here, bro. Doesn't look like it from here. Anyway. So I got the fucking scan done. I actually, I actually don't have my results. I assume it's not fine because my nose is fucked. They gave me spray. So, so I know that I have hectic allergies, uh, but I don't know how, I don't know exactly how bad because I've got to go to the GP and I'm waiting on my results for my nose. I think it's both because they bitch gave me spray. It's not working. Hasn't done anything other than make me hate the morning and the night. Got to fucking spray shit up my nose. Now, I understand to a lot of listeners, that sounds like the perfect Friday night. Not for me. Putting shit up my nose. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Dude, my girl is so good with this health stuff because she has to be because she's got like mental health stuff and then she has a little bit of physical shit. And she's so good with like doing her own research without letting that, uh, affect her judgment of the doctor's opinion, suggesting alternate solutions to the doctor and then working with them to come up to the right thing. And then when she gets prescribed something like a, a medicine or something, she understands what it does and she does the research on the side effects and she'll pay attention to when she starts taking this, does she get this side effect, how to do this dosage, everything. She understands that shit back to front. When I go to the doctor, I step into the room and I'm nine years old again. I sit down on the chair. I look at the doctor and I'm nine years old. She looks at me and she goes, all right, so what do you have any issues with? Dude, I'm 26 years old. You know what? I get sent in by my girlfriend with a fucking list <laughs> because she can't trust me to bring up all of my issues or even recognize my issues. And even if she tells me the minute before I walk into the office, she knows and I know as soon as I sit down in the doctor's chair and she says, why are you here? I am nine years old and it's gone. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. Where's mum? My knee hurts. Is that the issue? I can't remember, bro. So many times. I've been to the doctor like six or seven times, like various specialists and shit. In the last two, three weeks, shout out Australia's healthcare system. Haven't paid more than like two hundred bucks for all these visits. Fucking lit. Eat my dick, America. Oh, but we've got nukes. Yeah, whatever. I just got nuked. Okay. So now I'm immune. <laughs> I go in and she goes, the doctor looks at me. She goes, all right, so you need to see this specialist for these reasons. And you have to ask him these questions. You need this medicine. This is what it does. And you need to take it this many times. I get back in the car. Jazz goes, oh, how did it go? And I just have like six bits of paper. And all I want to do is cry. I don't know what, I can't remember what the fuck she said. I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to. You know, I got a call the other day about saying that I have uh, very high allergies. The woman on the sh on the phone then said, okay, so you need to make sure that you have to do wah, 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 wah. I have no idea what the fuck she said. I just said yes, hung up the phone, and maybe I'm going to die next week. Who knows? She could have said, if you if you turn the light on at 3 p.m., you will die. I, I, I would do that shit 100% of the time, 3 p.m., flick the light on, fucking die. If she said something like that, I guarantee you it didn't go in my brain. I had no idea what she said. She might have given me the cure to cancer. I could have given it to you. It's gone. Sorry. It's been deleted. I don't know what it is about the doctor. The minute I have to talk to those cunts, it just goes foo straight into my brain and then out my ass. I retain none of it. 
And this frustrates my girl to no end, understandably, because she wants to understand my health, but I don't even, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Go in, talk to the woman. She's wearing a coat. She, t- she says a bunch of words. Give me three bits of paper. Dude, I don't even understand how to fucking, how Medicare works. I, d- I didn't even know that I didn't have to pay for a lot of this shit. Every new place I go to, I'm, I think every single place I've been to has all been covered by Medicare, but I walk up to the, I finish my doctor's appointment and then I walk up to the counter to the receptionist and every single time they look at me like a moron and they go, yeah, you can go. And I'm like, I don't have to pay. And they go, no, it's covered by Medicare. Remember the country that you live in? <laughs> and I go, huh. Okay. So I can go? And they go, yes, go. I'm like, all right. And then I walk out the the, the whole way home feeling like I'm stealing something. <laughs> so, you know, in America, sure, it costs $300 to breathe if you need a fucking asthma inhaler, but at least it makes sense. At least there's a transaction. This Medicare shit's too easy. It feels like I'm stealing. <laughs> Dude, I... Uh, so I do the nose thing. I get nuked, whatever. Waiting on the results for that. I then go... So everyone's saying... Sometimes fans will message me, love the stuff, uh, but also have you been checked out for Marfan syndrome? My ca- my cousin has it. You look like you have it. I've been getting those messages for like literally years and just ignoring it, even though it's a pretty serious illness for some people. It has varying degrees, right? So I'm finally getting checked out and there's such a big long list. It's like I have to get my eyes checked, which I did do. I got 20-20 vision. I got to get my fucking bones checked, my fucking face, uh, and then a blood test and then and then my heart, which is obviously the most important thing because if I have this shit, bro, I'd go any minute, <laughs> right? So I go and I get the... I get the fucking heart scan and it's, it's just the, um, uh, it's, uh, what is it called? The fucking echo locator bullshit, whatever they fucking call it. Car echocardiogram. I think sounds like some Instagram whore who's really good at running. <laughs> Cardiogram. Got him. Um, so I go in and they do, it's like, yeah, when you, when you're fucking pregnant, and they scan your, your belly to see if it's got like three ears. And you go, oh, you want to get rid of that? You go, yeah, fuck that. I don't want to deal with something that's got three ears. Listen to me all day. <laughs> oh, fuck. So I go in and they do that. And she puts the fucking lube on my chest. And she's like, the doctor is so Asian. Like the most Chinese woman I have ever interacted with. And let me say, when I go and I see a specialist, that's exactly what I fucking want. I don't want, here's what I want. I want a white GP or someone who was born in Australia for the GP. Communication, essential, right? Someone who speaks the language really well. Why? It doesn't matter. I take that back. I want a GP that speaks the language really well, okay? Uh, Because you need to communicate with them. However, a specialist, okay, I only want a Chinese Asian specialist that doesn't speak any more English than is absolutely necessary. Like, I'm, I'm talking like, hello, goodbye, thank you, that's it. That's all I want. When I talk to a specialist, because if I, bro, if I walk into an, an into like a, a specialist who's like a heart surgeon and he goes, Hey, what's up, mate? I don't want an Australian heart surgeon. No way. You know why? Because he was, he was raised by parents who always told him, look, Mark, if you fail, if you fuck up, that's okay. We love you. We'll love you anyway. I don't want someone who grew up in an environment where failure was okay. 
If someone's doing surgery on my heart, I want them to only be able to say hello, goodbye, thank you. That's it. I want them to grow up with parents that said, if you don't become the best fucking heart surgeon in the world, we'll fucking kill you. That's what I want. And I think that they make the best surgeons. <laughs> and you're lying if you don't agree. You don't want a guy who had, who had like awesome, I'll love you anyway, parents fixing your heart. You want someone who had drilled into them as a child from the time they were four. If you fuck up this song on piano, you don't get dinner for a week. Hang on, I got to plug my fucking computer in here. There we go, right? So I come in and she's like mega Chinese. Incre and I'm stoked, okay? Because one, obviously she knows what she's doing. She's an expert in her field because if she fucks up, that's it. Dishonor to the whole family. She's over, right? But also a good bonus of having a specialist who has terrible English. You don't have to talk to them because they don't really know how and they don't really want to. They'd rather talk in their own language. And that's awesome, right? So we had a little bit of chat until she worked out that I wasn't really into talking. And she went, thank fuck. I don't have to talk to this white cunt anymore, right? Perfect. So she talks to me and she goes, oh, what do you do? And I stupidly said, I'm a comedian. And she went, ah, comedian. And I went, yep. Why do, why do cunts do that happens so often when you say you're a comedian is the most common thing is, oh, wow, say something funny. That's the most common one. And that sucks the most, right? The best one is just, oh, cool. That's all. Or, oh, yeah, really? I, that's, you know, I want the same reaction as if, you know, I just told you I'm an accountant. Oh, yeah, that's a job. <clears throat> but some people... Or that you tell them you're a comedian and they just think that you want, all you want to hear is laughter. <laughs> the most annoying thing is when you tell someone that you're a comedian, they in their head go, this person's fucking funny and they're joking all the time. And they will, you see people do it. They will laugh at everything you say because they just have in their head that you must be fucking hilarious because you're a comedian. I'm going to be real. When I turn the camera on, when I hit record on the podcast, when I jump on stage, bro, I'm funny as fuck. I am so good at this shit. I think I'm great. I'm very funny and I put a lot of effort into it and I think that I'm good at it and I'm hilarious. Dude, you catch me at the bakery. I'm a boring cunt. I'm not going to make you laugh and I don't want to. I'm a, you made me on the street, bro. I'm not funny. <laughs> I, 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 because I don't know. I don't I like turning it on. You know what I mean? feels fake when you do it to like one-on-one. -on -one. Cause here, like it, what I'm doing isn't fake, but I'm definitely amping up parts of my personality. I'm having fun. I'm doing my skill that I love to do. But that's like, if you meet Usain Bolt on the street, you go, oh, dude, Usain. And then he goes, foo, and just fucking runs away. That's what I would be doing is if you go, oh, Lewis. And then I just start fucking hitting you with the material. Like, bro, did you hear about Dreamworld? I wouldn't do that shit. That's fucking weird. Anyway, sometimes cunts, they, they oh, you're a comedian? Yeah, I'm a comedian. They go, ha, 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 ha. Like, that's what I want. Dude, that's like me going, hey, what do you do for work? And you go, oh, mate, I'm a plumber. And then I grab uh, a newspaper and I go, I'll be back in one second. I find the toilet in, in their house and I just fucking shit an abomination and then grab the entire newspaper, wipe my ass with it and shove it down the pipes, block the toilet and go, man, you're a plumber. That's what you want, right? Your job to do. <laughs> I'm going off this episode, huh? Um, uh, how long are we going for? Oh, fuck. I always do this. Guys, I'm going to take a quick break from the story. Dude, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off. 
No shit. The best razor I've ever used. Used it on my nuts. Didn't even come close to nicking it. I even like kind of tried. I was like, how safe really is this thing? Awesome. Bro, I might even shave my ass. <laughs> I might even shave my ass. That's how much I believe. You know what? Next episode, I'm going to come back with an ass report. Any of you dudes out there with a hairy ass, you're going to feel me on this. I don't have a hairy ass. I got a hairy crack. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm gonna <laughs> and I'm gonna fucking shave the shit out of it. I I trust this thing now. I've had a little spin because I'm trying to try it out. I don't like promoting shit that I haven't used and that's not good, right? That's why I always promote quality products like Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, Manscaped.com. That now that sounded very sarcastic, but I literally fucking went hard on that game for weeks. Okay, and. Okay, guys, I shouldn't have brought Raid into this, okay? Because there are a lot of legitimate grievances with Raid, and a lot of people say it is not very good, and they have a point. This, not that. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. For real, this thing's fucking awesome. It holds charge for, charge for ages. I haven't charged it for the last two weeks. Bam, still going. Uh, for some reason, it has a light on it. I'm not going to lie. That seems completely superfluous. That's like putting a scope on the thing. What do you need a light for? Who the fuck is shaving their nuts in the dark? Huh? Who's shaving their gooch in pitch black? Like, what are they out on some fucking remote camping trip and they really need to shave their nuts? No. Okay. I'm going to be real with Manscaped. Amazing blade. Incredible. Does a great job. Makes me look great. Perfect length, doesn't hit my balls. Gonna be real though, the light, completely fucking unnecessary. Don't need it at all. I don't know why it's there. When I use it, it doesn't seem to add anything. I mean, it looks cool, but it's unnecessary. That being said, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. This shit's really good. I think this is the third plug. I'm doing four with these guys, and then they decide whether or not to renew. So if you guys were looking at getting one of these, it'd be fucking really good for, for me and the show to get it, like, in the next, like, now. And use my code as well because uh, that really helps support the show. Uh, YouTube is getting a bit scary with all their fucking rule changes, like putting cunt on the up there with like hateful actual slurs that rocked me a little bit because you know, the next one's fuck the next, then it's shit. Then it's even talking about sex or talking about like, you know, you know where, where it's fucking headed. Um, so, and I just can't, I can't bow to that shit. So the only way I can run my, run my business is with, you know, brands that support what I do. And the best way to support what I do is to support the brands who help make this shit happen. Manscaped are doing that and they want to make a big presence in Australia. So if, you know, we pick it up, hopefully they'll come back and uh, maybe even sponsor the main channel. Who knows? Manscaped.com, <coughs> Code Spears, 20% off and free shipping. They're fucking good. They're a great price. Um, and I literally use them and recommend them. And I'm going to shave my ass next week. <coughs> right. Where was I? Oh, yes, that's right, the doctor. So I'm at the specialist, and she's got the lube on, and she's fucking rubbing my chest, you know, a little bit horny. No, I'm not. Um, it was actually really fucking cold and weird. Um, so she's doing that, and it took ages. She's looking at my heart, and, and I, I, my girlfriend freaked me out about this muffin shit. She uh, decided to scare me into taking it seriously. She's like, look, this is what happens if you got muffin, your heart is fucked. Uh, a lot of the time and these things can happen. You can drop dead at any moment. And if you don't know about it, it's bad. You need to get medicated if you have it, blah, blah, blah. Freaking me out. I'm thinking of all these messages, people saying, hey, man, you look like you have muffins. I do fit a lot of the visual uh, symptoms. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, I probably have it. I need to get fucking checked so I can confirm it. And I'm thinking about this and she's taken so long scanning my heart, looking at, at the top and the side and then at my neck. And it took like 40 minutes, no shit. Um, and then she finishes. And the thing about specialists, right, is they don't communicate with you at all. I don't know if this is different in other countries, but in Australia, you go to a specialist, right? Like when I got my fucking head nuked and got brain cancer, 
whatever the fuck that did to me. He didn't tell me the results. He said, all right, so your results are going to be with the GP. And I was like, oh, you know, you can't tell me. And he goes, no, no, I, I've got them, but I can't tell you. So like, I, that's why, that's why I'm stoked when I have a specialist who just can't speak English at all because they only know how to fucking nail their job because talking to me isn't even a criteria. So a general practitioner, big, huge part of their job is communicating with people. But but obviously, I reckon some of the science and some of the, the health knowledge is going to suffer a little bit. There's not, you know, however, if you're good at talking to people, you're probably not the best scientist in the world. You know what I mean? Like, that's why no one trusts scientists, because they're fucking dorks and they can't talk to people. You, if you meet a charismatic scientist, chances are they're trying to scam you. <laughs> You've seen them. They're on TV. Any scientist or doctor with charisma quits being a doctor and jumps on TV. Dr. Phil. Right? Anyway, so I'm talking to this woman, and she finishes up, and she's she looked at it for so long, like a concerningly long amount of time, my heart, different things and writing heaps of shit down so much shit she wrote down that I wasn't allowed to see and then I finish up she goes okay you're done she's just not smiling I can't read her face because she's wearing a face mask so am I. I put all my clothes back on put my shirt back on and then uh, I go okay is that it and she goes um uh yeah and then I go to the door and then she looks at me and she goes best of luck bitch what the fuck does that mean best of luck you're trying to scare me that's the scariest shit I've ever heard coming out of a specialist appointment about my heart. Best of luck. What does that mean? She said that shit like, good luck. Like, I'm going to need that. Like, I'm going to need some luck to get out of this. She knew my results. She can't tell me. All she says is, ha, good luck. Good luck with that heart. What does that mean? I'm, I'm fucking freaking out for days over this shit. Best of luck. I couldn't sleep. I went to sleep. All I could hear was best of rock. What does that mean? <laughs> Trying to, I'm fucking terrified. I tell my girlfriend, she goes, what do you mean best of luck? I'm like, I know who says that best of luck. And she didn't say it in a good luck. Just she said it in a best of rock. Scary as hell. Best of rock. So anyway, a few days passed, I get the results, GP calls me, she's got the eye test, she's got the heart, she's got the, <clears throat> the brain scan, she's got the blood test, everything, all the tests. And uh, I'm completely fine. <laughs> to be honest, right? I think I'd rather have Marfan syndrome because you know what I got now? I got a clean bill of health, but I look like I have a syndrome. <laughs> and I got no excuse. I just look like I have a disease and I'm fine. That sucks. I'd rather have the fucking disease. At least I got an excuse. Now I just look fucked. So yeah. A bunch of people kept messaging me, strangers on the internet saying, hey, dude, you look like you've got this disease. I'm fine. I don't have anything. I just got a fucked head and long fingers. Great. Thanks, science. Eat my dick. I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Heart's great. Eyes, 20-20 vision. Teeth, a little bit fucked, whatever. I'll fix that when I got money. Fucking... Best of luck. I thought about that for days. I for sh when she when I was on the fence about all this stuff. When that woman looked at me and said "best of luck," I fucking was like, "I got it. I've got it, and I'm gonna die." <laughs> as soon as she said "best of luck," I thought, "Man, I'm dying. This is it. I hope I get a few good shows, few good years of touring in. I so it's it's over." Fuck, dude. So I'm fine. Anyone worried? Other than my nose. My nose is fucked. I'm waiting on more shit to fix that. I'll keep you updated. Maybe I can fix my fucking head while I'm at it. <clears throat> Dude, this Fortnite and Apple shit is uh, funny to me. 
if you do, if you're not across at Fortnite, it's uh, like huge, obviously huge, huge uh, game, one of the biggest games in the world. You've seen it on YouTube. All those cunts making fucking millions of dollars out of it. There's some Australian guy called Lachlan making printing money. He gets like 10, 15 million views on everything he fucking drops. I talked to him actually a while back, had a short little conversation. I just turned out he was a fan of me. Um, and we had a nice little conversation. Um, but he's killing it on Fortnite. Um, they, so they, so what's happening is from my understanding, this is only, so it's Friday when I'm recording this. So this has only like just happened a little while ago, literally today. Uh, Tencent, the company that owns uh, Fortnite or part of Fortnite, right? I think they own 40% of it. Chinese company, huge gaming company. I think, I believe they're in League of Legends, uh, a few other games as well. I'm really stepping into an area that I'm not 100% confident with um right but from what i understand the apple itunes store has really strict uh has a really strict um rules and uh terms around how apps can charge their users so uh from what i've read it seems like uh the only way you can accept money on a phone if you're an app is if you go through Apple Apple's payment plan and obviously they take a giant cut of all that money moving through their platform. Uh, so that's why, for example, Spotify, when you have a Spotify account, you can't sign up on your iPhone. You can only sign up on the browser and then use that account on your phone as an app. Um, because if you were to sign up on your phone, Apple would take a giant cut, which would make everything more expensive, which would make it a bit fucked, right? So the positives of that is uh, obviously everything's run through Apple stuff and checked and, uh, at, well, checked as well as a giant corporation can check billions of fucking apps, right? But they check it and they control it. So, you know, if you have an issue with money, you there's one point of contact and they act as a middleman, all that kind of shit. So that's, you know, that could be good. The downside of it is obviously price is jacked up really high and it's uh, quite uh, anti-competitive, I suppose, because, you know, if there's a if there's another payment provider that wants to handle money for these companies or if there's a an app that wants to accept money and they already use this, they don't want to do that and it obviously makes fees more expensive, but it probably also uh, really, really lowers the... Uh, instances of fraud because say someone sets up a scam app, takes everyone's money and Apple can't do anything about it because it wasn't their payment server. Maybe it's not even run through their country. They can't do anything other than remove the app from the store. That leaves all the customers going, well, we're fucked and we're going to chase up this company that wasn't even real in the first place rather than resolving it with Apple who. I imagine could probably take the money back because it got you send your money to Apple, Apple sends it to this one, you would think they'd be able to take it back and then give you your money back too, right? That's my very limited understanding of it. But <clears throat> so Fortnite uh, has gone around the the payment system of Apple and uh, have started offering all of their services at a heavily discounted rate or that's at least what it seems, they're just not cutting Apple in. So in response, Apple kicks Fortnite off the platform, which is huge. That's like a giant, one of the biggest, most popular games on the App Store, booted off the platform completely, no warning. And now Tencent, the company, or the company that owns Fortnite, which is two companies, Tencent and something else, is suing Apple, right, and... They are saying that if they win this lawsuit for them to use their own payment provider, they're not going to accept any special deal for them. They're only going to accept a like a blanket rule change on Apple. So, which would just open up the floodgates for everyone to use their own shit. Apple would lose literally billions and billions of dollars. Um, and it would completely change how business is done through all this app shit. So it's really interesting. Um, but what's fucking funny about it 
is that Fortnite obviously planned this shit. They knew they were going to do it and they've turned it into a publicity stunt. Um, and now Apple are kind of responding to that. So Fortnite did this thing knowing they get kicked off, they get booted off, and then they immediately release like a a, a well-made 3D animated fucking video parodying an old ad by Apple uh, and 1984 uh, and then promoting a hashtag free Fortnite or whatever the fucking hashtag is. I think that's what it is, right? And ne- And now... All these Fortnite fanboys are going to war with Apple and all these Apple fanboys are going to war with Fortnite and it's just so fucking funny watching regular people stand up and rally around billion-dollar corporations that don't even give a fuck about their own employees, let alone their customers. Who the fuck's standing up for Apple here? I stand with Apple. And then meanwhile, up 30 stories above them, one of the cunts making phones at nine years old jumps out the window, hits a suicide net and bounces back in the window. You don't even notice. It's not even your field of view, right? I don't think about it so it doesn't happen, right? And I say this while recording this on an Apple fucking laptop with my Apple phone to my left, right? And then Fortnite's like, oh... We stand with Fortnite. Meanwhile, they're working their employees to death. They're fucking owned by a dictatorship. They're probably selling all the user information and infiltrating the US as per Chinese dictatorship doctrine commands, right? Meanwhile, these nine-year-olds are going, Oh, free Fortnite! I want to use my mum's credit card to buy skins and you can't stop me! I want the ninja skin! Um, <laughs> and there's nothing they can do to stop him. So I hope this kills Fortnite, but also I kind of hope they win the lawsuit because it is anti-competitive, I suppose. But also I understand it because like if you do open the floodgates and anyone can handle payments and stuff, it's like, yeah, that's good, but so many people are going to get scammed. There are a lot of shady things. I mean, you look at all the fucking apps that are run through Apple's thing. They're fucking shady as. And and so many, like, um, children with access to parents' laptops and stuff just accidentally run up, you know, I've seen it on the fucking news, like running up ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 of uh, money on fucking in-app purchases. I mean, I did that when I was a kid without noticing. I remember I was when when you bought music, when before streaming services you used to buy music, digital downloads and stuff, a song was like a dollar 60 and we got like a a $50 uh, iTunes card and me and my brother just jumped on iTunes and we bought all these songs that we liked and we didn't notice that we'd went over the $50 limit. iTunes let us keep going. We didn't know that we thought we were going until it would stop. We were kids. We didn't understand what 50 was when you broke it down into like $1.60 increments. So we just kept going thinking that it would stop us. We ended up spending like fucking $200 of mum's money. We went, we spent 250. We went into mum's money and then she didn't really understand technology. She was just like, oh, it's gone. But like so many kids have done that with in-app purchases run up thousands of dollars of bills and now parents know that if that happens you can just go to apple and if, if it you know if it happened in like a day or two they'll go yeah sure here's your money back it's just software it never happened but if that happens and a child does that on some app that just have a ruthless policy uh they can just go yeah you bought it fuck off that's our money now and then, and then Apple won't be able to do anything about that, theoretically. I mean, this is what I think will happen, and I'm a fucking moron. Um, all right, it's almost at the end of the podcast here. I think we should do miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, I'm also doing, uh, if you are if you made it this far and you missed last episode, uh, every week now with every podcast, I do a bonus Patreon-exclusive uh, podcast. So the podcast now goes, uh, we just continue it on. I'm just going to stop. Uh, the free version and go to the Patreon version. Uh, it's It works really well. I figured it all out. You can donate once a month. You can do as little as $3 if you like this stuff. Believe it or not, a bunch of people doing three, six bucks a month is means so much more to me than anything else. And it makes a huge, huge difference. You know, I mean, if we have fucking literally, there's like 10,000 people that listen to this every episode 
and that might be 15,000 people because not everyone listens to every single one. Bro, if I had a 1,000 patrons, that would literally change my life, change how we do this shit. And that's literally just a 1,000 people, three bucks a month. So if you enjoy this, if you get a lot of value out of it and you want more and you want to support me, bro, that is the best way to do it, especially when there's no shows. And I truly do appreciate it. We've got a banging community in the Discord uh, and uh, the new episodes are coming out and they're going to be much more... I feel like they're going to be much more personal talking with the the Patreon supporters because obviously that's who it's for. Um, but I'm, I really enjoyed the first episode and that's coming out and I'm going to continue on as well. I'm going to do one little email here and uh, then I'm going to continue on on the Patreon podcast. All right, this email. Dealing on, if you want to send an email to the podcast, send it out to podcast at com, and I'll get back to you. Hey, Lewis, my name is Brad. In class, this is dealing with a left-wing bitch. Uh, in class at uni, we had to come to a discussion on the Me Too movement and we were specifically touching on the actions people take as a result of the movement, example, cancel culture. My teacher threw to me in my to, threw to me to get my two cents on the issue and I made the point that even uh, traditional warfare has set rules that both sides have to abide by, but this new form of social media justice and doxing people doesn't really have any rules, um, and it seems to be guilty before proven innocent. I think, I think that's fair. I think a lot of the time that is, and uh, you know, some you know sometimes it's justified, and a lot, but a lot of the time it's not, and you see it happen every day. Then the next girl gets thrown to and she starts ranting about how no one is fit to discuss sexual assault in this class, calls me out by name and says, if some college boy rapes a girl, you think he shouldn't be doxxed and that's okay? This was clearly not the point I was making. And the teacher moved on to his next point once she was done. Uh, I'm not really worried about what what this chick thinks of me, but I don't love the idea that she might run around spouting her bullshit opinions of me and prevent me from making friends as I'm new to the uni and it's a relatively small one. I still have a few more weeks of classes with her and might have more access, might have more across the next few years. Any advice on dealing with her? I've thought about doxing her just to make a point because it would make me laugh, but who knows? I uh, love death rest, don't scare me, and I can't wait to see you live once this shit goes over. Have a shit one. Yeah, obviously do not dox anyone for any reason. Um, I think that's always bad. Uh, don't ever do that. I think that sucks and it's not funny. Um, but I think that was also you joking. Um, <clears throat> yeah, look, the, the idea that only people who have been sexually assaulted can even discuss sexual assault is insane. Because how would you solve the issue if the only people allowed to talk about it were victims? Like, that's such a weird way of looking at things because obviously if you if the only people allowed to discuss and solve something that was beyond traumatic for them, they won't have a clear view of it and they might not, they're probably not going to be equipped. Like if you, just because you get raped, it doesn't give you a PhD. Do you know what I mean? In how to solve this shit in crime, socio political bullshit and all that kind of stuff. I understand the point that she's making of like, Oh, uh, no man knows the female experience and no man will experience the negative sides of being a woman and no man will be able to understand them as well as a woman. I think that a man can understand issues that women face and empathize with it, but will never be able to truly understand what it's like for them. Right. Whereas a lot of people seem to think that, uh, say like a woman couldn't even comprehend a male issue. Whereas that's not true. They wouldn't be able to 100% comprehend it or understand it, but they can definitely sympathize with it and help us find a solution to it. Um, and that's where this chick has obviously gone off the rails a bit. And it sounds like it's because she might have some personal experience with it, which is horrible and sad, but that goes to my point of like having experience or being affected by a tragedy doesn't equip you to solve it for the world. 
because you got to deal with it and it's going to make you incredibly biased because you might be dealing with shit like PTSD, trauma, this, that. It's a horrific thing to go through, but going through it doesn't give you the tools to stop it from happening to somebody else. If it did, it wouldn't be a problem because obviously it's a terrible, horrific thing to happen to you. If it, if it happening to you gave you the tools to stop it from happening to someone else, this shit would have been solved a million years ago. This shit's been around for a long time. Uh, and it's getting better every day. Uh, yeah, I think she's de she's definitely wrong there. I would just avoid her, bro. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the time, people like this with extreme opinions who are really vocal and really emotional. It's like tennis, bro. The winning strategy is let them expose themselves. You don't need to say anything. Stay away from her. Don't talk shit. And uh, if she talks, you can let her. I mean, the only people she's going to convince are people you don't want to be friends with anyway. Uh, and uh, what I've learned in is when uh, I mean this is as a as a as a comedian who blew up online. This is a weird example, but as a comedian who blew up online, a lot of traditional comics are waiting for you to be that hack. They're waiting for you to be that sexist, that that fucking terrible person. Especially with the image that I that I have and uh, and had online when I came into the scene. A lot of people were expecting me to be this fucking arrogant asshole douchebag. And I understood that I had to be careful with how I acted because if I gave them a reason to believe their suspicions, that'd be it for me because that's what they think I'm going to do. If I even give them a hint of it, that's all I'll ever be to them. So what I learned was never, ever give them a legitimate reason to hate you. It's actually magic. If someone hates you without a real reason, what, what's really happening is they've made a judgment that you're this type of person. So say, oh, for example, Tom's a fucking violent guy. They're saying that without evidence, but he looks like he's a violent guy and a lot of people think, fuck. this. So, so if you're like a really scary looking guy, I get this a little bit. I'm real big. I wear black. I, 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 I intimidate people without meaning to. So a lot of the time when your first impression is, oh, this is a violent guy, if you were even to do something as little as nudge someone with your shoulder, bam, suspicion confirmed, he's a fucking violent person. However, if you go to a very concern, a very determined effort to, I am never going to let these cunts confirm their suspicions because I know I'm not that. And I'm not even going to give a hint of it to these cunts who don't know me. Eventually what happens, and I've seen this happen with myself in the industry, is people either finally meet you and go, oh, he's nice. That doesn't make any sense. I heard all these bad things about him, but he, I met him and he was lovely to me. I guess he's nice. And you do that with enough people one-on-one just floating around as you, as you go about uni or as you go about your, your job, you do that to enough people one-on-one, -on -one, all of a sudden, even if, and this happened to me, I walked into an industry, every cunt didn't like me. Every cunt thought I was this fucking huge online, evil cyber bully, arrogant fucking person. They meet me on one-on-one -on -one and they go, fuck, he's really nice. I would get people thanking me for being nice to them like it was something I bestowed on them and, I, and it was special. Like I only did it for them because all they'd heard was this guy was a fucking asshole, right? Because that started from what people saw online and people didn't like this new wave of standup. So I didn't give any kind of reason. And what ended up happening was one by one by one, this took me years, one by one by one, people would meet me. I would be nice. I would get on with people because I am a nice person. I wish no ill on anybody. You know, I make, I love dark humor and I love saying fuck shit and telling jokes but at the end of the day, I'm a nice person and I never want to be mean to someone. Uh, eventually, what happened was everyone, one by one, came around and each person you turn, it's not even turning, each person you uh, just meet and they go, oh, he's nice, they then go, oh, I met this guy, he was really nice. Really? I heard he wasn't. He goes, no, he was nice. I actually didn't really notice anything about him at all. He was just a normal person. Oh, that's weird. And then it's like compound interest, bro. One person turns another person, turns another person. No, 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 no. And then those people at the start, and this stuff is with me, those people at the start that started that shit and didn't change their opinion, you know what happens? To everyone else, 
they look fucking stupid. And even to themselves, in the back of their head, because you've met them and you've been nice, they go, am I the asshole? No, I'm not. I'm not wrong. But they know. Uh, so that's what I would suggest to you, bro, is do nothing and be nice to everyone. And you wait six months. It's going to take a while. It's not overnight. But you watch. If you give them nothing, all of a sudden, in six months, people will go up to you and say, hey, man, this person told me that you were some fucking sexist pig, but I think you're really nice. And then you go, that's right, bitch. Suck my dick, you whore. <laughs> um, no, but that's that's my advice. It's just be nice and don't give them a reason. A lot of the times when when you get in these situations, I think this goes for a lot of a lot of life's lessons, especially with social media where people feel like they've met you before they've met you, if you know what I mean. They go on your fucking Insta or they see you comment something or share something and they go, oh, fuck, this guy's a, this type of person or this girl's a whore or whatever. They judge you before they've met you. If you just give them you and you're nice, that shit just starts to go away. It takes a while. But you can literally give people what you want them to see of you. And that obviously has to be you. If it's fake, people pick up on it. The reason why it worked for me was because I am a nice person. I don't like being mean and rude and people not liking me. I like being nice and I love comedy and I want to like comedians, right? So if you give that to people, eventually it'll change. And the people who don't change will look fucking crazy, bitter and weird. And that's what's happened. <laughs> All right. I'm going to end it there for the free version. I'm going to continue on the Patreon podcast shortly. Uh, thank you very much. Consider supporting me on patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Uh, check it out. Even if it's fucking the lowest tier, I don't care. Join the Discord server. It's going off. The community is really growing and uh, we're trying to keep this shit spinning. Bring back that real comedy. I'm really, really enjoying this podcast and I'm glad that you guys are. I'm glad you guys are coming. Check out the uh, fucking Spearhead Sundays podcast clips as well. And definitely use uh, code SPEARS at manscaped.com for free shipping and 20% off your fucking lawnmower 3.0. It's really good. The light is superfluous. But other than that, fucking awesome razor. All right. See you later. I'll talk to you in a second on Patreon.